have right now in the shelter? Currently, we have, I think, just over 200 animals in the shelter, and that's not including what's in foster homes. So in total, animals in our care, and then what's at the vet as well that's hospitalized for like illness or injury. Um, we have close to 300 animals in our care. And uh, the 200 animals that we have here, you'll, you'll see in a little bit when you, when you go back there, because the shelter was built in the early 70s, mm -hmm. and really nothing's been done to it since then. I mean, we've band-aided things here and there to try to make it as comfortable, and I, can't, I don't even wanna say modern, but you know, we've tried to do some, make some alterations or renovations in, in a way to try to make it more comfortable. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but the sh it's just it's failing it's falling apart every day it's something else it's the animals are living in very uncomfortable very deplorable conditions they're stressed i mean we have ideally you want one animal to have its own kennel but that means we would need to have t 200 spaces but right now we have you know with the dogs specifically there's like f some kennels i think have like seven dogs in them and the animals, it's, it's overcrowded. It's not, that's not how animals should be living in shelters. So aside from adoptions, what yeah. else do you think this shelter needs to move forward? Well, we, we definitely need a new facility. I, I, we're at the point where we're not gonna be able, the adoptions isn't gonna save us. Like we're not gonna get out of this pet overpopulation crisis that we're experiencing through adoptions because right now the trend is getting rid of pets, um, specifically right before the 4th of July, right before the summer. Everybody wants to get rid of their pets because especially now that COVID's over, people can travel, they can get on planes, they can this, they can that. So all these animals that people got during COVID, which was the trend to get animals, and you know, you saw the shelters everywhere were empty, that it's completely flipped. So now, you know, it started, I want to say, last year, and it's just progressively gotten worse over the last year, where you have everybody returning to work, they're traveling, and they're just, the animal is now an inconvenience to them, and so it's easier to get rid of the animal than it is to find, you know, some other option, like pet sitting or pet boarding or whatever are you guys currently working on getting a new facility we do have um we have a new shelter project fund up and open to the public um it's moving at a very things are moving at a very slow pace um we thought, you know, because people kept telling us, like, you guys need to, like, open something up and do an online thing and this, and we'll donate, we'll donate, and we did. And mm -hmm. it wasn't as well received as we thought it was gonna be. Mm -hmm. um, but we do have some larger benefactors who have, you know, approached us and they've committed, um, they've already d made the donations, and we currently have a million dollars towards this project. Um, but unfortunately, that does, that's not even a third, that's only a third of what we need mm -hmm. to even, you know, to, to, to get to complete the project. Another thing too is that we need a new piece of land and we've decided, we're trying to find somewhere else to go because it would just be much easier to, you know, start over from the ground up. But that's been another obstacle that we've been faced with is, is finding a piece of land. Mm -hmm. But um, building a, building a new, shelter would give us more space it would make it more comfortable for our staff it would make most importantly it would make it more comfortable for the animals um you know they wouldn't be so crowded they would have they would be in climate controlled kennels they would have indoor outdoor access um it would just be much more comfortable for everybody all the way around how could people help the humane society donating adopting fostering um, sometimes, you know, I've told people sometimes just as something as simple as sharing a post that we make on Facebook or on social media, um, you know, just sharing something as simple. Social media is very powerful. And like I said, sometimes just something as simple as sharing a post can, can get a message to the right kind of person or audience. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that people can do. Um, also, you know, making sure that people are spaying and neutering their pets, that's a big thing. That's part of the reason why there's such a huge pet overpopulation problem right now, nationwide. Um, 
during COVID, a lot of veterinary clinics closed down. So, you know, as everybody knows here in Imperial Valley, we're very limited on veterinary resources. You know, we do have a low cost spay and neuter program, but because of how low our prices are through grant funding that we got from the state of California, um, our, our program is highly sought after and we get a lot of people from other communities calling to utilize that program. And we do try to limit it because it is specifically for Imperial County. Um, but it, it we, we get a lot of animals done, but it takes us time to get them done. So if somebody were to call right now, you know, they, they're, they're looking at about a three to four month wait to, to get the animal in.